Hey everybody, welcome back to this series on Cloud Functions for Firebase. My name is Doug, and last time you learned about enabling retries on your background function. This is a very special configuration, and it has a big effect on the way your function receives events. There are other configurations you should know about as well, because the defaults might not be the best for your case. So let's see what Cloud Functions offers. The first thing you should do is figure out the runtime you want to use. At the time I'm recording this, the default runtime is Node 6. Node 8 is also available in beta, and I'm sure Node 10 is going to show up eventually. Be sure to check the documentation to find out what's current. Only LTS, or long-term support versions of Node, are supported, which means that only even-numbered major versions after they've been stabilized. If you want to change the default for all functions in your project, you have to edit your package.json file and add an engines child to the top level of the JSON. If you want Node 8, it'll look something like this. As shown here, for any new functions you create in your project with the Firebase CLI, Node 8 will be used. You can check the version of the function during deployment in the CLI output. If it doesn't show the version you want, you might have done something wrong. Your choice of Node runtime affects what JavaScript language features you can use. So with Node 6, you have access to ECMAScript 6, which notably doesn't have support for the async await syntax. If you want async await, you'll have to target at least Node 8, or use a language like TypeScript, which can transpile to ES6. There are also some features of Node which may only be available in certain runtimes. You should navigate to node.green in your browser to see the full matrix. Now, you might be wondering if there are languages other than JavaScript supported by Cloud Functions. It turns out that Python is supported in beta currently, but not by the Firebase CLI. If you want to use Python, you're going to have to use a different CLI called gcloud. This is a whole different thing, so look that up if you're interested. My opinion, I think the easiest Cloud Functions experience is with TypeScript using the Firebase CLI and libraries. All right, once you've chosen your runtime, you may want to configure how much memory each server instance gets allocated for your function. You have to choose from one of these five options. The default is 128 megabytes, which is probably OK for most simple functions. But it's possible your function may need more. For example, maybe you're going to do a large database query, and the entire result has to fit in memory at once. Or maybe you're processing large images. In that case, you should configure upward as needed. There's one important thing to know when choosing more memory, and that's the fact that you'll also be getting a faster CPU with each step up, even if you don't need it. Your function's billing will be impacted by each step up as well, as you're charged for both gigabyte seconds of memory and gigahertz seconds of CPU. Or to put it another way, you're paying for the total amount of clock time that your function is actively using the CPU and memory. The documentation lists the exact cost per 100 milliseconds. It's just fractions of a penny for each configuration. And the good news is there's an amount of usage your functions will get for free every month, so you can develop without having to worry too much about the cost. And if your function isn't running at all, it's not being billed. In any event, be sure to click the link in the description about billing to learn more. Another runtime property of your function you may want to configure is its timeout. By default, all functions have a 60-second timeout. You can increase that up to a maximum of 540 seconds, which is nine minutes. If your work needs more time than that, Cloud Functions might not be the best place to do that work. Consider instead offloading it to another Cloud product, such as App Engine or Compute Engine, to run asynchronously. Now, bear in mind that increasing the timeout of your function may also have an effect on billing. So if your function gets stuck on some external API or you neglect to terminate it properly in all cases, It'll possibly chew up even more memory and CPU resources until it finally times out, and that could cost you. So be sure you really need more than a minute before changing the default. OK, after you've figured out how much memory and time your function needs, you might want to consider which region it should deploy to. Region is a term used with Google Cloud products that indicates where in the world the servers are located that run your code or store your data. There are a lot of different regions out there, but not all Cloud products are available on each one. You can see a chart of all that if you use the links below. For Cloud Functions, at the time of this recording, the available regions are US Central 1, US East 1, Europe West 1, and Asia Northeast 1. This should grow in the future. The default region is US Central 1. This is probably OK for most products, but there are two main reasons why you'd choose a different region for Cloud Functions. First, you might want to put your functions closer to your users. 
Closer physical location generally means faster throughput and lower latency. But this is true only for HTTP type functions. Depending upon what your function actually does, you may not see much of a benefit in moving them. Another reason is to put your functions closer to your data. If your functions make heavy use of Firestore or cloud storage, you might want to optimize the data flow between them. Bear in mind that the billing rate may vary for some cloud products in different regions. If you're interested in changing the region for performance reasons, it might be worth benchmarking your options so you end up making a good decision. In order to configure your function's memory, timeout, and region, you can specify them either in your function code before deployment or in the cloud console afterwards. If you do it in your code using the Firebase CLI, you'll use the builder syntax in your function definition. There are a couple methods to add to it. In this code here, a storage trigger is being defined with memory of one gigabyte and timeout of 300 seconds. Also, it's being deployed to the region Asia Northeast 1. There's no requirement to set them all at the same time. You may only specify what needs to be different from the defaults. Once the region of a function has been set during deployment, it can't be changed until you delete it. The Firebase documentation shows a way to minimize downtime of your function if you need to do this. However, memory and timeout configurations can be changed at any time in the Cloud Console. Just go to console.cloud.google.com, make sure your project is selected in the dropdown at the top, select Cloud Functions on the left, and choose your function. You'll have a way to edit its settings there, and they'll take effect for new server instances that get allocated for it. Well, that's about all you need to know for Cloud Functions configurations that will help you optimize the way your functions work. There's one other thing you can optimize, and you've probably heard of it already. It's called the cold start time. You can't avoid cold starts altogether, but there's an important optimization you can use to reduce that time in your functions. So be sure to join me here next time on the Firebase channel on YouTube to see what can be done.